Where in your life has God pulled out the reverse card and changed the situation in a moment? Thank God for those moments. Hey, and welcome to the Takeaway Podcast. I'm Tanner Treffin, joined by Pastor Joey Rumble, and we're helping you apply the message from this past Sunday, Live Courageous. And you were telling the church how uh, we were diving into some of the things to remember, baptism and communion. You want to share a couple more points about yeah, baptism? Cause, yeah, because Jesus had instituted the two ordinances of baptism and communion. And on the baptism part, in the Old Testament, the Jews would baptize a proselyte, a Gentile, who was wanting to join them to signify the convert being cleansed nature. And then John the Baptist uh, used baptism to prepare the way of repentance, uh, requiring not only Gentiles, but also Jews to uh, be baptized, not just Gentiles, to, uh, so showing that everyone needs uh, repentance. And then, um, uh, but that, that wasn't the Christian baptism that Jesus instituted that we see later on, you know, in the book of Acts. And, and, and so uh, Christian baptism has that, that deeper meaning that we dove into, and I developed that during the message. So I just told the church I'd kind of share those few points on the takeaway podcast today cool thanks yeah um i was loving you uh sharing about uno we were when we were on the mission trip we were talking and playing uno a lot and uh they play uno flip i never played uno flip i don't know it's a different I, type I of uno know, um but it was fun it's fun god flips it on a dime and, okay <laughs> uh but uh did you want me to share some yeah about- i also told the church we would share i'm really looking forward to hearing this about Three key things that distinguish Christianity from Mormonism and why Mormonism is not a, a Christian faith. Uh, and, and so uh, teach on that. Yeah, I think it's a great question uh, because I've had conversations with Latter-day Saints and I've walked away thinking, oh, they're a Christian. <laughs> like, right. they, they, we believe the same thing. And the problem with uh, um, these different things like Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, Latter-day Saints, a lot, they use the same language, but they redefine the terms. And so it's, it can be seem similar even though it's not. Okay. And so vocabulary and redefinition of terms is a big deal. Um, okay, so three, three ways that Latter-day Saints and Christians are not the same is one is who is God, nature of God. We believe in a triune God who's been God for all eternity. Uh, Mormons believe in a mortal man who worked his way to Godhood, so God has not been eternally God. Uh, another one, what is the gospel? Christians believe we're saved by grace through faith, um, through Jesus' work alone, by trusting in that. Mormons believe uh, one verse is uh, you're saved by grace after all you can do. And so it's a combination of after you've worked enough, then grace comes in. So grace and works together, not grace alone. Um, and thirdly, uh, they don't just believe what, what is scripture. We believe in the Bible is scripture. They believe in the Bible, the Book of Mormon, Doctrine of the Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price. So they add three other scriptures. And that's based on believing Joseph Smith as a, as a prophet. But Deuteronomy 18 uh, talks, talks about prophets. If they have false prophecies in our prophet. And then Jesus in Matthew uh, chapter 7, um, Jesus in Matthew chapter 7 says, You shall know a, a, prophet by, a false prophet by their fruits. And three, four, four things that are concerning about Joseph Smith's fruits uh, is uh, one false prophecy. Uh, one example is the book of Abraham is a false translation of Egyptian. Uh, uh, two, uh, he was a racist. If you look at Second Nephi chapter 5, you can see uh, some racist stuff there. Uh, he was boastful. He boasted that he was better than Jesus in the history of the church. And, in, um, and he also had, uh, uh, was a polygamist. He had around 34 wives. He married sisters, he married a mother and daughter, and he married uh, teenage girls as well. And so those are some concerning things right there. So. Yeah, that's good. Thank you so much for, for developing those. Really appreciate it. So, uh, so follow up, a uh, couple things. I, I had a question of, so do Mormons teach that you actually work your way to become a god? Yep, yep. Uh, there's, so there's three different, so everyone is saved. And that's another thing with the gospel. Um, we believe that not everyone's saved yet to choose to confess Jesus as Lord to be saved, but everyone is saved uh, that they're going to one of the three kingdoms, or the three different kingdoms. The highest kingdom is the celestial kingdom, and that's where you reach exaltation and become a god, and that you have to be a Mormon, you have to uh, be baptized in the church, you have to uh, be married in the church, and, and do these all these different works to become into that exalted godhood stage, but that man can work their way to godhood, just like our Father God has done, just like Jesus has done. Um, so that's pretty different. Wow, that's very helpful. I really appreciate that. So, 
And, cool. and, and give me uh, one more thing on that, and then we'll dive in. Uh, that first one you shared, that uh, that God was, uh, share that first fundamental belief that's of totally who is different. God? Yeah, the triune Godhead. Yeah. Share that again. Yeah, uh, Christians, we believe in the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Okay. Um, three different persons, one God, have been eternally God. Um, but the Mormons believe that the Father God, Christ as God, that they were all once mortal man, human beings just like we were, and have worked their way to Godhood. And so Father God had a father and mother God, and they, they had a father and mother God, and it just eternally progresses back of this man working their way to Godhood. So you're saying the God in heaven that the Mormons, uh, they say the God who is God in heaven actually was man at one time and worked his way to God? Yep. That, so man, every, every God was once a man and worked their way to Godhood. And, and so how, they will say they're monotheistic. How can they be monotheistic? Because at their core, they're actually polytheistic. They yeah. believe in many gods, but they say they're monotheistic because they believe that Father God is the God of this universe, and all these other gods are gods of their other universes and worlds. And when you become a god, you'll be a god of your own universe and world, and so we worship the god of this universe. Is that, that's how they're monotheistic. Wow, that is massively different than what Christians believe. Uh -huh. I mean, massively. <laughs> I mean, that is huge, but it takes you a while to yeah, read through uh -huh, that. Moment. Uh huh. And ask the right questions, and be patient, and loving, and caring, and and kind of, and help them see that this is not what the Bible teaches. This is totally different. So, yeah. That's wow. Thank you. That, which is crazy. That's that's just crazy thinking. Yeah, um, but it's what a lot of them have grew up always believing and been taught, and and so just because you grew up believing something, that means it's true. You got to weigh it against truth and the scripture and everything. So. Amen. That's good. All right, let's dive into the message. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so uh, right, if one of the first points you made in the message uh, was we, we are not here to make people happy. Um, if the hell's reality, people are going to hell, and so we got to share the truth, even if it makes some people upset. So. Yeah, speak the truth in love. Share sharing the good news and. Uh, being the, a light uh, to others. That's huge. This, that's powerful. Uh, this is our time to live courageously for the Lord. Um, and and we, need, we need that, you know, the example of Esther, to if I perish, I perish, to do what's right, no matter the cost, and to live for the Lord. So, so. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Good. Um, do not let anger rule your heart. And you were saying that, I felt like it was resonating with the church. Um, yeah. That. As I spoke that, I, I could just tell that it, it really... Uh, touched on some hearts and and so I, I just how to uh, take away to apply that to your life are you at peace and know that you're a dearly loved son and daughter of God if you know that you're a loved son and daughter of God it, it just that internal anger that internal um, <clears throat> lack of peace uh, you begin to grow in that peace in your relationship with God where you don't end up being on edge internally I believe people that snap with anger <clears throat> that there's inner issues taking place that there needs to be this peace that needs to come from God and uh, how do you feel like you overcome anger you tend to be very calm in situations uh, well uh, there's a lot of Bible verses you know, <laughs> about, about not being anger and I've seen a lot of the damage that anger has caused um, and so really I, I you know obviously it's by the grace of God but I try really hard to to not let myself take offense uh, to uh, have almost low expectations of, of other people and not like feel like they have to treat me a certain way, but know that like, hey, I'm not anything special. You treat me any, <laughs> any way right. you want. Right. And uh, I'm just thankful, you know, that God loves me and I can, and, and just having that, that identity of who you are. So whenever everybody else treats you some way different, you know, you know God believes you're, you know, worthy to die for. And, and so that's huge. Like one thing I think, that's big is um, to not uh, like I feel you talk about men struggle with this a lot, and I feel like men um, we act like we don't get afraid, and when we are afraid, I feel like a lot of us struggle fear. I know I do uh, to mask our fear with anger and right. trying to control the situation with like anger and and and, and rage and, and 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 not knowing how to handle those fear emotions. And I think instead of masking your fears with anger to to almost embrace the fear in a way of like I am afraid, like identify it, recognize it, and then take your fears to God and pray about it, and and not be afraid to cry. I feel like, uh, um, G you know, Jesus cries, David cries in the Psalms yeah. a lot, and, and and crying to God yeah. and bringing Him your brokenness and woundedness is a is a big way to help with fear. Yeah, and I think some others. Yeah, that's those are all great, and I think some other things of overcoming anger 
are, and this is on the practical side, sometimes if you really study yourself, you can tell when you're about to snap and just back out of the situation. Back up, relax. Uh, if you can, you know, just take a couple breaks. Uh, Vince Vitale, I think it was his name back way back in the day of, of when he'd be calling a, a basketball game, legendary announcer. You need to take a T.O. You need to take a yeah. T.O., that timeout piece that we all know, sometimes need timeouts where we back up. But also physiologically, you can read your tells where internally where you feel like, ooh, someone just pressed my button. Sometimes you'll do something, you'll bite your lip or you'll uh, – there's something that you know that there's this boiling inside that you need to back off, you know, uh, you know and, and just uh, be slow to speak, slow to become angry, and quick to listen. So you, learning to grow in that's huge. Yeah, and um, I think – People in their personalities, I feel like people either have a natural personality of they're more like merciful, or people have natural personality more justice oriented. Yeah, okay, and I'm more mercy oriented, so it's just easy for me to let people stuff go, let people get away with stuff. But but that's not always good. It's good to have people who are justice yeah. oriented. But if you're justice oriented, I feel like you get angry easier right. because a lot of times it's a good anger. Something yeah. wrong is happening, and you're upset about the wrongness. I'm like, ah, it'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not good either. So <laughs> yeah, and, and, and by the way. Uh, we're going to lean in a lot more in this and, and really grow in this because I could tell that was a, a, a key area. And, and I just want to set it straight right now that uh, years ago when I was getting counseling and working through a lot of issues, I remember the counselor asking me about anger and how often I get angry. And I was like, actually, I don't know how many. And, and I'm embarrassed to share this, but it, it's true. He goes, well, why don't we just call your wife and see what she says? And so we, I said, sure. And so we called Jenny up on the phone. The counselor did. I was actually in another state uh, with the counselor. And, and hey, and he had never met Jenny before. And we were talking to her on the phone. He goes, how often does Joey get angry? And she goes, well, and she was trying to be nice because she's got that mercy gift. Well, he pretty much gets angry every day. And I was like, oh, I mean, that was painful moment that I realized things got to change. And so uh, I just want you to know. And so I, I've changed a lot and grown a lot. I'm still not a poster boy in this area, to, but I feel like I've made a lot of progress. So I'm really looking forward to uh, that's one of the areas we'll, we'll be working on more and more as a church body to grow in that. Yeah, um, the Lord has definitely given your spouse as a mirror in your Ooh. life. And so if you yeah. ever want to know how you're doing an issue, uh, just ask your spouse. They'll, yeah. they'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, I heard Wade Cadero say one time, you know, he was being interviewed, a legendary pastor. He goes, I've learned that my wife sounds a whole lot like the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and so a lot of times the Lord will use, if you're married, your wife or your spouse to speak that what he's wanting to share with you and so to remind you of some of those mm -hmm. things. To sanctify you, really, to yeah. make you more like Christ. Yeah, um, that's the, the Holy Spirit action there that he uses your bride and your spouse in your life. That's good. Um, yeah, I loved what you were hitting on with um, uh, that God uh, gave these these feasts to the, the Jews of Purim and stuff like that to remember and um, that you, now we have baptism and communion to remember and um, that we believe in a believer's baptism and, and that, that just makes sense that's what I see in scripture that that you have to have that faith and it's that outward sign of the inward change and so I just love that yeah that's huge um, so you have the feast that God instituted in the Old Testament and it would be cool to dive into that teaching one time on a Sunday or even in this uh, but the fe the feast in Esther now God's never mentioned in the book of Esther, so it doesn't say that God instituted this feast. Uh, so you you don't know was that something that the 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 Jewish people created to do it as remembrance, or did God tell them to do this? Because Scripture doesn't say in this, you know, He's got silent. You see Him behind the scenes, but the point is, we got to have things in our lives to remind us of what He's done. And so, I, I baptism, communion are the two great moments that you look back at baptism. And you remember, and this is what I meant to say in the second service that I, I said later on in my message, that one of the things, look back to baptism and that you died to self. You're done with that old way of living. That's a remembrance moment. But I think also really those key times that God's moved in your life, you got to write them down. You got to mark those 
as remembrance. And also, this is a great parenting thing, to share them with your kids, that we need to continue to share those with our church, those wins of what God has uh, done in our church's history and how he's changing lives. And uh, those are just big things. They're mm-hmm. very important in Scripture. Yeah, I love the Romans 6 verse you brought up that when Paul says, don't you know that when you've been baptized, you're baptized into mm-hmm. Jesus' death? Right. Um, and you talked about you can use that when the, you know when you feel shameful when you feel accused when you feel condemned when you feel guilty uh, to say hey you're right you know i do de- i do deserve all this condemnation but i already died jesus already took it on the cross i'm dead you know there's there's no one to condemn tanner's dead i'm a new creation i'm alive in christ now and, and christ isn't condemned and i'm walking in that and that newness that, that grace yeah. of in him it's and huge so. and then with communion that part of remembering the 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 body that his body was beat for us that uh, there is healing uh, in Christ and by his flesh being beaten for us, uh, that ripped and, um, and his blood was shed for our forgiveness of sins. And it's just powerful that there is, uh, there is healing, there is deliverance, there is wholeness, there is forgiveness. And all of that, it, communion is a sign of remembering what Jesus has done for us and that he commanded us to do it. We got to continue to remember that this was one of the ordinances that Jesus wanted us to do to remember Him. Mm-hmm. And um, one thing with that too is Jesus said He won't drink the the wine again until He comes in His kingdom. And so it also reminds reminds us that He's coming again and yeah. He's going to establish His kingdom and new heaven and new earth. And so that's cool to remember as well. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Cool. So what was your takeaway? I think my biggest takeaway, and I hadn't thought about my own takeaway you should always oh, do. i'll share first yeah you go first i'll um, give us some thought so you talked about um how something interesting was esther uh tells them all to fast uh all of them in, in that city in susa um all the jews to gather them all together to fast and uh to, he, she says her own girls in, in the harem, I guess, are, are going to fast as well. And so they're having these prayer groups there. And I just can't, you know, just, I can just see them, you know, being hungry and thirsty for three days, um, not eating. And then when she comes out and says, like, he didn't kill me, you know, he, he did the scepter and just the celebration that, you know, the prayers worked. And so just um, that these intercession groups matter in big moments in your life. And so... When there's big moments when I really want to see God do something, to not neglect to ask for groups of intercessory prayer for those things. Yeah, it's huge. That's that's a great takeaway. For me, it's clearly one of them is continuing to work on the anger of key elements in the anger part. And I got a few things there I want to go deeper into. I've seen God do amazing things in my life in that area. I just feel like there needs to be much more work in my life, but also in our church in this area. So we're going to continue... uh, not like one set series on anger. Maybe one day we'll do that, but really start looking at uh, some key areas in that to help others as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to dive in and learn more. Um, so thanks so much for diving in with us, church. Uh, can keep diving in the Word of God. And hey, you need a takeaway if you want to make headway. So what was your takeaway from this message on live courageously? God bless you. See you next week.